Yeah, I mean, I don't think he, he'll come over here quite, quite now. I think he's too happy in England being protected. Fight fans, welcome back. Oh, he, he's running. He's doing his cough, mate. When the legendary Lennox Lewis retired, British boxing lost a standard bearer and a void appeared across the heavyweight division. The man to become Britain's first world heavyweight champion since Bob Fitzsimmons in 1897. As a young Olympic gold medalist with a chiseled physique, Anthony Joshua seemed the perfect fit to fill Lewis's superstar role. A legion of magnificent fighters from down the years. But the former king was unconvinced. Uh, you know, he's got plenty of time, he's still young. Forged in an era when the best fought the best, Lewis scrutinized Joshua's career choices and picked against him. Lennox is a clown. I don't respect Lennox. A cold reality check or legacy-preserving bitterness? Float like a butterfly, he stings like a wasp, not a bee. We take a look at the implicit rivalry between two British boxing icons, Anthony Joshua and Lennox Lewis. Welcome. To a Motivedia presentation. As I say, you poke me, you poke me. Sooner or later, you're going to hear what I have to say about me. Both on Saturday night, these two gentlemen will face each other for the greatest title in sports the heavyweight championship of the world. With some accusing Anthony Joshua of being a manufactured persona, content with the comforts of home soil, Promoter Eddie Hearn took his prized asset across the water to conquer the American market. This is another fight where the country here will stop, the world will stop to watch this, and it's going to go down in history just like those other two. In the summer of 2019, as his best laid plans were torn apart by unheralded Andy Ruiz Jr., Joshua received another verbal assault from Lewis, and a social media spar ensued. Anthony Joshua made it easy for Andy Ruiz because he wasn't fully there. I think if they don't fix what's wrong with Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz wins that fight hands down. Having built a staunch following off his family-friendly personality, Joshua's patience had been tested and he fired back at the former undisputed ruler. Anthony Joshua's thought, you know what, I've had enough, he's fired back. This is two men having an opinion on each other. Why is the big deal? I'm giving a, a young man advice when I need he it. He felt like he was almost in a way... Um, yeah, I did feel like that, yeah. Picking on you. Yeah, I did like, feel like Lennox is a clown. I don't respect Lennox. Create a legacy, though. So, so am I. My legacy is to sit back and enjoy the younger generation coming up. Lennox is a like that. Me and Lennox are cut from a different club. People always kind of talk, 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 talk. Then as soon as I say something, it's like, boom, it explodes. Joshua, unsure as to why his compatriot would drop so-called harsh truths, remained classy as always and swiftly retreated from the social battleground. He, um, he said a couple of things the other day, but nobody asked him, well, why did he say it? What, what, what was the reason? He didn't really give a good account. Though, the touch paper had been lit, and inevitable comparisons between the two British bangers gathered momentum. He was very, very clever, he was very smart. He could double up on his jab. He would have beaten today's Andy Joshua. There's no disrespect to Andy Joshua. It's Lennox Lewis all day. They don't make heavyweights like that no more. Opening the question as to whether Joshua was, at this stage, on the same level as Lewis in his heyday. Now, look at people like Lennox Lewis's comments. Who Lennox Lewis fought after 22 fights? I think his 21st fight, his 22nd fight, was Razor Rabbit for the Commonwealth Cup. It's about as good as it got. Having previously predicted that Klitschko would beat Joshua in their 2017 clash, and later scrutinizing Hearn in his charge for not chasing the Wilder fight, because I don't see what he learns by going out there and knocking people out. Deliberately or not, Lennox had forcibly taken aim at his supposedly protected UK counterpart. Rematch. Anthony Joshua can wait. He doesn't want. He doesn't want any of those guys. You know, uh, he's too happy in England being protected, and and uh, you know, boxing in front of the British crowd. Joshua. As he approaches 32, Joshua holds a 24 and one slate with 22 knockouts. Whereas, just before his 32nd birthday, Lewis dealt with the tangling tentacles of Henry Akinwande to go 31-1 and 1 
with 27 early finishes. This is a last chance for Akin Wande. If he holds on again, Mills Lane will find a second successive disqualification on his record. Akin Wande has been disqualified. Mills Lane has done it again. Three years earlier, Lennox was stunned in front of his home crowd by the unfancied Oliver McCall. Oh, Lewis walked into a right hand, and that was the sucker punch that they worried about. Much like Joshua, after his shocking loss to Ruiz, Lewis returned in style. There's a lot of it. Uh, of course, you caught here. Terrible trouble and it stopped. Oh, it stopped. No, he actually caught me in the first round with a good shot, and that kind of woke me up, so I started, started, started rattling my punches. The old saying is, the right hand can take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world. And that secured another world championship belt. With little between Lewis and Joshua in terms of size dimensions, the jab and uppercut are common punches in the arsenal of these ferocious finishers. As is the nature of boxing's big men, their respective weights steadily rose and fluctuated in line with opposition and necessity. Hey, Lennox Lewis's weight, by the way, is interesting. 17 stone, a lot more than he used to weigh in the days of his razor Ruddock wins. People don't think that heavyweights have to make weight, but me, I make sure that I have to make a certain weight. It keeps me disciplined. Both warriors have had their chins questioned. Joshua is down now! Yet in truth, both have soaked up hellacious bombs from huge hitters. He's caught by a left hand, and he might well have gone down but for the ropes. What a turner up here, another left hand. Working behind the scenes, under the intense scrutiny of his experienced team, Joshua is an ever-improving, imposing specimen who has shown resilience and tactical adaptability since his 2013 debut. Quite as many as he had by this stage in the garden. <laughs> by Joshua in a lack of head movement from Ruiz. At times, he has battled back from adversity, such as in the Vladimir Klitschko fight. Anthony Joshua is now going for it, and Klitschko's got a hold on! But had it been Lewis in the ring that night, landing those powerful right hands as AJ teetered on the brink, the ending would likely have been much different. How do you think history will look back at your story, you know, as a as a fighter in, in, in the years to come? How do you think Lennox Lewis is going to be remembered? Uh, a good athlete, good gentleman, you know, you tell me. Trained for so long by the masterful Emmanuel Stewart, Lewis was a quality ring technician who dominated off the jab, knew when to hold and knew when to finish off an opponent. There's the cautious Lennox Lewis who went in and fought a self-protective fight. And then there's the attacking Lennox Lewis who went in and blew people like Galata and Grant and Rockman in the second fight away. Lewis and Joshua may carry question marks over their punch resistance and supposed vulnerability, but never their heart. And certainly, this will increase his popularity in America where fans like punchers. Still as mentally adaptable as in his prime ring years, while Lewis considers Tyson Fury to be Britain's number one heavyweight, his view of Joshua has gradually mellowed. Reluctant to write the current unified champion off so soon, as AJ's style has changed, so has Lewis's tone. Yeah, I'm looking forward to these challenges because at least I find out who I am as a fighter. Who do you think wants it the most? Who I think wants it the most? It the most yeah. I think Tyson Fury wants it the most. In a new trend, fueled by influencers and old legends who refuse to admit their days are over. WBC World Champions is a draw. A proposed return to the ring for the former king should be attributed to the rise of novelty boxing. I'm fight Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis? Yo, yeah. I can't wait to see that. When's it September. gonna happen? Nothing pushing me in the ring right now, so it's not. You know, people would love to see that fight, but uh, I don't know. With limited recent exchanges, the sometimes frosty relationship between Lewis and Joshua simmers in an undeclared truce. Like me, I've, I'm, I've done, you know, I'm retired. I'm the last undisputed, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have no problem. But if AJ puts pen to paper against his biggest rivals, then any bubbles of animosity may quickly resurface. Whoever's got the belt, I'd love to compete with them. If that is Tyson Fury, let it be Tyson Fury. Their paths to the top have been different, and comparisons remain premature. One man has already secured his legacy as a Hall of Fame resident and all-time legend. It's over! 
For the other, the biggest names now lie in wait. In time, I will say, I tell you what, you judge for yourself. Anthony Joshua's critical years are upon him as he looks to silence the ghost of a historical rival and write his own name into the book of the greats. Those guys have paved the way for us to do it better. And that's what I was saying up there. What's my what's my uh, dream as a boxer is to sit back when I'm done and watch the next heavyweights break records and do it better than we do. You are not alone, Paul. You're being stalked by Abud Sanchez and watched by all the fans who turn into every Motivedia presentation.